Let's go over how to set up custom logging like this and how to effectively use login throughout your code base. If you're new to the Full Stacks channel, please subscribe and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'll integrate the logging into an existing code base so you can download the code below or you can integrate this into your own project. We'll start off by adding the logger package version 0.6.0. This setup will be following the guide that I wrote for logging and it's linked in the description below. Just to show the setup of the logging, we'll add a home scaffold and we'll use the floating action button to log out some things for us. We'll create a new instance of the logger called log at the top of our app. Then we'll add a log message for each of the logging levels to see how it looks in the default state. We'll do one for verbose, we'll put a debug message, we'll put an info message, a warning, and then also an error. If you run this code now and you click on the floating action button, you should see your logs printing out something like this. I'm not a big fan of all the text being logged out, so in this tutorial, we will be covering customizing this logger and making it more readable and easier to understand. The logger can take in a printer, so we'll supply it with a pretty printer. We want to reduce the methods being printed out, so we'll set that to zero. When there's an error, we still want to print out the stack trace. We'll print out three levels of the method calls. The line length was a bit too long for me, so we'll reduce that to 50. And I always want the colors for the visual cues, so we'll leave that to true. I still want the emojis as well, and then we will remove the print time. If you restart the app and you press on the floating action button, you should see a less cluttered version of the logging that we saw before. I'm still not a fan of the logs being printed in a box, so we'll supply our own printer and we'll make sure that it's just a line of text and we'll keep the best parts of the pretty printer. We'll add all of our logging setup in one file called logger. We'll import the logger package, then we'll create a new class called simple log printer which will extend the log printer. We'll implement the override for log and to show you what this does, we'll just print out the message that comes in with a normal print line. Back where we create our logger, we can now supply the printer using our simple log printer class. And if you restart and run the app now, when you click on the floating action button, you'll see that the messages are printed without colors, without emojis, just as a normal print line. The first thing that I think is very important when debugging only through your logs is to know what class is logging out your message. So I want my logging in this format where I have an emoji, I have my class name, and then I have my message following that. That means that each class will have to pass in its class name for the logger when it's created. So we'll create a new class name variable at the top of our printer and we'll pass that in through the constructor. The two things I did like from the pretty printer was the color of the log as well as the emoji. We'll still get the colors from the pretty printer and we will get that from the level colors variable and we'll use the level parameter to index into the map. We'll do the same for the emoji and get the emoji from the level emojis variable and we will pass in the level into the map. Then we'll simply use a normal print line but instead of using the string directly we will put our message inside of the color. The first thing we want to add is the emoji and then we want to print out our class name. We'll follow this by a hyphen and then we'll print out the message. To test out our logging, we can go to the main file and we can pass in the class name to our simple log printer as my app. And if we do a restart now and we click on the floating action button, you'll see that the logs that are printed out are much less verbose and it's easier to read. The last thing I want to do is remove the boilerplate around creating a log. So we'll create a top level function called get logger that returns a logger, it takes in a class name and we'll return a instance of the logger and we'll pass in our simple log printer and passing in the class name as well. And going forward, if we want to get a logger, we can now just say get logger and pass in the class name that we want. That's it for all the logging setup and let's go over some of the things you want to do in your code base to make your life easier when it comes to debugging through your logs. To make this video not as boring as me just speaking about logging, I'll go through the code base and I'll implement some of the stuff that I would talk about now. The first thing you want to do is set your logging level to the level that you want to see in your messages. You always want to be able to control your log level so that when you want to see the important information, you can just remove the logs by setting your current level. 
it's most likely that in release you'll only see the info level of your logs so it's a good idea to run your app using the info level and see what you are seeing and what you are still required to see and change your logs accordingly and as you can see if we log with the info level we only see the info the warning and the errors so as i was going through this video and trying to make content i realized that just talking about logging and adding logs is very code specific so i'll just go over the things that i'm doing and i think that you should do to improve your logging and be more effective when you want to debug the first important thing is to be able to determine the flow of the user's path through your code base. And that can be easily done by putting an info log at the beginning of every public function call. The format of this log will be the function name first and then the parameters following the function name. This will help you to easily determine when you pull your logs from a remote server what the user did before they got to the point where they received the error. And one public function to always add logs in first is your route generation. We'll add a new info log at the beginning of generate route and we'll put the function name first and then we'll add a, a pipe character and then we'll print out the name of the route being requested as well as the arguments of the route that's being sent through. The next thing you want to do is to use warnings where it's appropriate. Through developing and debugging apps for quite some time now, I found that having warnings in your code is more valuable than having the errors with its stack traces printed out. Warnings is a way to give yourself some indication to tell you that something might have gone wrong here and this might be the reason why you are getting a crash. So on the way towards getting a fatal error, you'll have lots of endpoints where you can stop and look to see if that's the actual reason for the crash. Warning should be kept for when you are expecting something and it's not there. Or when you are expecting something in a certain form and it's not in that specific form. It's not fatal at that point but something like that can lead to a crash if you don't go defensively down the line. So you want to warn yourself about the discrepancy in the expected formats and things like that. The next important thing is the way you log your errors. Most people just do the basics and print out the exception, which I think is a bad way of trying to help yourself figure out what's going on. The point of setting up your logging is to make sure that when there's a problem or when you want to figure out what did not work, you want to have a guide saying this is what happened and this is why this happened. So when it comes to error messages, I print out a contextual error message based on the code and then I print out a minimum stack trace afterwards with five method calls in it. There's a few more things in the written tutorial and I won't go over all of them here, but I hope you find this useful. I think logging is very important to the architecture, but it's something that can be added afterwards, which is why I'm making this a separate video. And I also want to make it clear that when I started posting my first video, I started learning Flutter about one month before that, or two months maybe. And I built my first production app only one month after I started learning Flutter, like the first time that I've ever touched Flutter. I convinced the client that I want to use Flutter and I did. And I've made a lot of mistakes in that architecture, which is how I came up with the architecture that I shared with you guys. I would like to learn as much as you do. So if you have any feedback on the way you log, what other things can be useful, please let me know in either the Slack or the YouTube comments and I will definitely incorporate that into my next video and share it with the, with the audience that I've built through you guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys next week.